we're going to continue to talk about planes, equations of planes. Now here we have a picture. We have a plane over here. Uh, we know that it has this form over here. Now, what else do I need to determine this plane? If we know this a normal vector, which is a vector that is perpendicular to the plane, and I know this point on the plane, then this plane here is determined, right? So you need two pieces of information. First, you want to know a point on the plane, but you also want to know a vector that is perpendicular to the plane, and which is called, this vector here is called a normal vector. Now, this normal vector here, normal, start with n, so we use a n here, Look, notice the ball face, so it's a vector. Now, what about other, uh, what, we're looking for the equation for this plane over here, right? We know past this point and has this normal vector. What will be the equation for this plane over here? To do that, we will try to Think about, think about any point on this frame. Let's, let uh, this P here could be an arbitrary point on this frame. The P here has X, Y, Z for coordinate. Then what happened over here is, let's try to find the equation for X, Y, Z, or let's try to find the equation of this vector. Okay, for this vector R. Ah, okay, so you can do that. Okay, so uh, notice that uh, what's the difference between this pawn and this vector R, okay? The pawn on the plane is equal, so I have parentheses x, y, z. And this vector R here is a vector that starts from the origin and points to this point, and the vector basically replaces parentheses here by angle vector. So that will be the vector R minus it. Okay. So now we're looking for the equation for this vector R. So we're looking for this. If I take that equation for this vector R, then I can get the vector of the plane. Okay. This line in two dimensions means that I come up with the n arbitrary point on the line, and then we find the equation of the line. Okay. So that was this. Now, what kind of information we want to use here? We know that this is the normal vector of the plane. And uh, actually, uh, so, uh, Susan asked a question about the parametric for the nice segment, but I, I will save it maybe at the end. Okay, I forgot to go over uh, with you. I will save it at the end uh, after climate. Okay, so here, now this is a normal vector, okay? Now, because this is a normal vector, it's going to perpendicular, it's going to be orthogonal to any vector on this plane, right? So if you have this vector over here, okay, take any vector on this plane, it's going to form a 90 degree angle. It's going to be orthogonal to any vector on this plane. We'll have nothing here, 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 and this is going to form 90 degree angle with the, that vector. Okay. Now, now we will take. So our goal here is to find the equation of this R, and we know R naught. So we're going to take this vector here. This is going to be on the plane, right? This vector here on the plane is. R subtracting R naught by the triangle norm. This vector is R subtracting R naught. Okay. This vector is perpendicular to this normal vector of the plane. So what happened to the dot product? Yeah. The dot product is zero, right? Okay, very good. So this normal vector dotted with this vector R minus R naught here is equal to zero. Now this equation, okay, it's going to relate this R here with R naught and also N, but we can rewrite this equation a little bit. Okay, how do we rewrite this equation? You can distribute this, right? So you have 
and that with R, and then subtracting N dotted with R naught, that's equal to zero. But then you can think about this slide solving equation, right? You can isolate N dotted with R on this side and the N dotted with R naught on the other side, and they will be equal. So you can have these two equations are actually equivalent, okay? So either this equation or this equation is called a vector equation of the plane. So if you if you are given mm -hmm. if you're given this position vector of this point P lot and you're given the normal vector, you can either use this equation or this equation. Um, those are both of them are called vector equation of the plane right here. Okay. Now how do you remember this? Try to remember this picture, okay? Remember this picture. So I have this normal vector. So I have this normal vector. I'm gonna dot it with a vector on the plane. This is a vector on the plane. This vector on the plane is R subtracting R naught. So N dot it with R subtract R naught equal to zero. And once you remember this, this come, right? This, the, this is equivalent to this, okay? Okay, now those are called the vector equation of plane. Now what about a scalar equation for the plane? Okay, so let's write this, let's write down the component for this normal vector, let's call A, B, C, okay? This kind of like the, remember the direction vector, it has A, B, C as component, okay? So this, let's give the component here as A, B, C. And then R over here, remember, is this a uh, is a position vector of an arbitrary point on the plane. This is R, and then has is a vector that has x, y, z as component. Okay. Now R not here is a point. Uh, R not here is the position vector of this point on the plane. It has x not y not z not as components. Okay. Then the vector equation, remember, uh, let's use the first vector equation, uh, the equation five. So the normal vector, that it with this r minus r naught, that's equal to zero. And what does it become? What should I put over here? This one here will be what? What's the normal vector here? A, B, C. Yes, you got it. Okay, so A, B, C. And then what about this? R minus R naught. How do you subtract two vectors? You sub in algebra, you do the component raise, right? So when you have R subtracting R naught, you take the X component here, subtract the X component here, right? So what should I put here for the R minus R naught in the X component? X minus X naught, and then Y will be Y minus Y naught, Z will be Z minus Z naught. Yes, you got it. Good job. Okay. So you have this. Okay. So you have this. That's equal to zero. All right. So remember, how do we do that part? Of? We take the each corresponding component and multiply them, right? And then we sum them up, right? So let's do the, that part of here. So A times what? X minus X naught, okay. And then what? B times Y minus Y naught plus C times Z minus Z naught, that will be equal to zero, right? Okay. So that is, um, that is the scalar. That is the scalar equation of the plane right here, okay? So we can rewrite it this way. But how do you rewrite this? Well, that, that's the equation. Today we have so many equations, isn't it? Are you, are you has a screening with the equation? So it's good to, actually, not too bad. Once you put it down a couple of times and um, try to remember. Sometimes uh, visualize it also. Understand and remember, okay? Okay, this is called scalar equation of print. What was the vector equation of the plane? This one. What's the scalar equation of the plane? 
This one. Okay. Okay, you have two. Okay. The rapid equation, okay? Okay. Think about that. Normal vector is also to any vector, okay? So Aaron said it was online and online. The super vector on the okay? So the bad part is this way. Okay. And um, the state equation of okay, pain is this way. So how do you remember? Let's take the normal vector, A, B, C. And then uh, because of that part, of that, right? That part of that is let's say A times with first the uh, x component of this vector, which is x minus x, x naught. And then such this second component here, B, B comes the second component of the vector, which is y minus y naught, plus two times the, the last component of this vector, which is D minus D naught, and then that's the first vector. So this two are equation. This is the first factor. This is how you write down the first factor that one okay. So put them down. Okay, uh, maybe you can make some flash card for this. Okay, and remember, okay. Okay, let's do some example. So you can, you can uh, remember this, understand that and remember better, okay. So now we want to find an equation of the plane through this point with this normal vector. And then also find the intersect and sketch the plane. Okay. So we know that it passed this point, right? I actually I actually sketched this using GeoGebra. So I know that it passed this point to four negative one. Okay, it's right here. Okay. And then this normal vector two, three, four. So the normal vector two, three, four is this normal vector over here. So I draw that. And then um, the plane will look like this way. Passing this point had this normal vector. Okay, so if you want to visualize that, okay. So let me put down the point on this side. Okay. okay. So what is well? What's a? <laughs> a is a is uh, okay. A is <coughs> this one, right? A is two. This is a. This is an A, and then this is a B, and that's a C. Remember, A, B, C are the components of the normal vector, okay? So A is two, B is three, and C is four. And then um, what about this one? So what does this correspond to? This one correspond to, you tell me, this is what, X naught, Y not and Z not, right? Okay, so those are the one. So what are they looking for? Find the intercept and sketch the plane. Oh, what do you mean intercept? Intercept here means what? Can you someone tell me? That means X and Y and Z intercept, okay? So x intercept and then um, y intercept and then z intercept. So basically, they are trying to look for where does the plane intersect with the the x axis, y axis, and z axis. Okay, so they are they're looking for the three intercept. Okay, how do we do that? But first, we want to find the so looking at this picture. I can see, I can see it actually intercept the, well, it's a little bit hard to see, right? Even though I make it large. So intercept the x-axis somewhere there, okay? And the y-axis somewhere, okay? So a little bit hard. I think maybe using algebra to do it might be maybe faster, okay? So let's find the equation of the plane first. So we know this x naught, y naught, z naught, and then a, b, c. What's the equation of the plane? The scalar equation, right? What is it? We just have this, right? Will be a times what? x minus 
x naught. So that will be what? Two times x minus two. Yes, you got it. Okay. So two times x minus two plus what? Three times y minus four. Yes. Okay. And then plus four times z minus uh, g what g plus one yes you got it good job okay that's equal to c wow you just you just wrote you, you just wrote the first print equation in your life <laughs> congratulations <laughs> okay this is like a milestone for you guys okay <laughs> all right so this is a what what does it call this is called this i think it's called a scalar equation right yeah it's a scalar equation of the print so you wrote the first scale equation for the plane in your life, okay? It's not too bad, right? Once you do that a couple of times, it actually become your friend, okay? So take this A times X minus this, take the B and then Y minus this, et cetera. And then because of, think about the dot product, right? The normal vector dotted with the, the, y, uh, the R minus R naught. You couldn't so okay. So now for this equation, we can actually um multiply this out and then combine like chain and then put this put this equation in this form. Okay, kind of like the standard form, like when we in the xy plane, can kind of like the standard form, right? So we can put it in this form, okay. Uh, but this form actually gives you more information. This this one here gives you information of the normal vector a b c also give you which point it pass it pass this point two four negative one okay this one kind of like the point slope form right okay this is the standard form okay now once you get the equation of the plane we can find the x-intercept how do you find x-intercept do you guys remember y and z equals out right yes good so x intercept x intercept is intercept with the x-axis on the x-axis uh, y and z both equal to zero so we're going to set y and z equal to zero and what do you get if y and z equal to zero six. six yeah you got it okay so as you can see here uh, down here in this <laughs> Okay, and similarly, you can find the intercept. The, you can find the y-intercept, you can find the z-intercept, right? How do you find the y-intercept? You said what? You, you said z and x equal to zero, right? Okay, good. Now, similar, so if you do it that way, you find the three intercept. X-intercept is here, six, y-intercept here, four, and then the z-intercept here will be three. Okay, you got it. So kind of like when you intercept with this. So think about that plane right there. So you look at this plane over here. This plane over here, this triangle. This triangle will be this triangle over here. This triangle over here. So you can make it larger, look like this. Okay, so the plane will be three, and then the it's now. So we do that with the, the three, the three terms, okay, like that, and you get this triangle, look like this, okay? So what do we have, what do we do in this problem? First, we write the equation, the scalar equation of the plane, and then to find the x, y, and z intercept, we just set, um, for x intercept, we set y and z equal to zero, and then we found it, right? Okay, not too bad. Okay, now that equation I wrote over here is the scalar equation of the plane, right? And we can rewrite that in this form, right? We can multiply this out and we write it in this form. When we rewrite it in this form, the D here, okay? So remember when you multiply this out and combine a uh, right chain, at the end, you will have here, you will have minus ax naught, and then you have this quantity over here. So the d over here will have this, 
this quantity. This quantity will be here. Okay, so you can multiply this equation out and why the equation in this way, okay, this way. This one, this equation here has another name. There's so many names. It's called the linear equation in X, Y, and Z. Um, well, we know all know what's linear equation, right? Equation here, uh, one way to tell that is, the exponent on the variable, right? Is the degree, it's going to be one, okay? Linear equation, linear. The exponent on the x, y, and z is going to be one, okay? So linear equation x, y, and z. Conversely, <laughs> some students say, what does it mean conversely? Conversely means it reverse the order, okay? So, so what does, Conversely, so if you if a then b, what's the converse? The converse of this is if b then a. So that means you reverse, okay? You reverse this um, hypothesis and conclusion, okay? So conversely, uh, it can be shown that if a, b, and c are not also well, if a, b, and c are not all zero, then the linear equation represent a plane with this normal. Okay, so what do we have? What did we do in the past? We have given a point and the normal vector. We got the plane, but now we're gonna go back. So, so we're gonna give you this. Linear equation A represent a uh, plane with this normal. Okay, so um, so if you see, look at this equation, well, just giving you an equation like this way, you can tell the normal vector. For example, I'm going to give you one example. So example, suppose I give you the equation of a plane, say five x plus six y minus two z. Um, plus 11 equal to zero. So I give you this plane. Can you tell me what's the normal vector of this plane? Yes, you got it. It's a five, six, and negative two. This five, six, and negative two is the normal vector. Isn't that, isn't that, say, wow, well, how did you get, say, people say, wow, well, how did you know that? Well, it was proven right here, right? That was a trick. Okay, so giving you this equation of the plane, you can tell the normal. Okay, so so we do the converse. Okay, okay, good. Okay, I want to ask someone to read this. Um, how about? <laughs> Matthew, Chen, whatever you need that people. Uh, what's your name? Chester. Mm. Chester, could you read this? For instance, the plane x plus 2y minus 88 equals 4, and 2x plus 4y minus 16 equals 3 are parallel because the normal vectors are 10y equals 10 to the minus 3, and 2 equals 2, 4. The planes are two planes are not parallel, and they are and they intersect in a straight line. And the angle between the two planes is defined as the two angles in the normal vector. Okay, perfect. Good job. Okay. All right. So I'm giving you this this plane over here and this plane here, and you can tell the normal, right? So look at the coefficient here. This is one. 2 and then negative 3. So 1, 2, negative 3 is the normal vector for the first plane. And then this plane over here, 2, 4, and negative 6. So 2, 4, negative 6 here is the normal vector for the second plane. I think I should put the arrow on top. So factors, okay? And the relation between this, you see this one here is actually this one multiplied by 2. Right, 
Okay. So you can tell that this two plane here are parallel, okay? Because the normal vector uh, scalar multiple each other, okay? So they're parallel. Okay. So that's how you can tell two planes are parallel. You look at the normal vector, okay? Or you can look at the coefficient of x, y, and z here in this in this uh, linear equation. Okay. And if they're not parallel, then they intersect in a in a in a straight line, right? Like this. So this is a plane, and then you have another plane. When two planes intersect, you will have this straight line over here. This straight line over here is you see this straight line over here? It's the intersection of the two planes. Okay. Well, any any two planes intersect here will be um this is a straight line right there. And what's the angle between them? The angle between them is the RQ angle between them is this angle data. Okay. How do you find this angle? This angle data here is the angle that between the two normal vector, the RQ angle between the two normal vector. Well, which makes sense, right? Question? Okay, now I'm going to talk about distance. Now we're trying to find a formula. Okay, uh, in this example, let's try to find a formula for the distance from a point to the plane. From this point to the plane, I'm going to find a formula, right? There's a lot of information today, isn't it? But it actually uh, need to, it takes time to digest, okay? So be patient with yourself. Okay, now we're going to find a formula to for the distance from the point here to the plane, okay? So how do we do that? Let's think about it. So we're gonna let this P naught over here to be a point on the plane in this given plane. And then B, what's this B? The B over here is the vector corresponding to P naught P1. So basically is a vector that pointed from a point on the plane to this point that you try to find is distant from the plane, right? Okay, so pointing to that, that's the B, that's the vector B. Tell me, how can I write, what are the components of this vector B, given the coordinate of this and this? Can someone tell me? So B will start from P naught standing at P1. So that will be P naught P1, this vector. And how do you write this vector? You take the X1 subtracting X naught, right? You take the ending point, the component of the ending point, subtract the component of the starting point, right? So that will be X1 subtract X naught, okay? And then um, what's the second one? Y1 subtract Y not. Okay. And then last one, Z1 minus Z not, right? Okay, good. Now you have successfully uh, written 
the components for this vector B. Okay, so this vector B will be this. Now looking at this figure right here, okay, you see this distance D over here? Okay, is equal to the absolute value of the scalar projection of this B onto this normal vector, right? So when you project this B here onto this normal vector, that's how long it is. That's the distance from this point to the plane. You got it? Okay, remember? So you have this vector over here. And then this normal vector is perpendicular to the plane. But then when you project this onto this normal vector, then how long is this projection? That's the distance from this point to the plane. You got it? <laughs> All right, so this project to the normal vector. So how do you find the projection of a vector onto another vector? What kind of product was that? <laughs> that corresponds to the that product, right? So, so when you project this to this, so kind of like how long is this shadow, right? So project this onto this vector n. How long is the shadow this one cast along this direction? That's the that's how long is the that product. Right here. Okay. So it says the component, remember, component of B onto this vector N. Remember this notation? This notation is actually the component of B onto this vector N. And we can think about it as the shadow, the length of the shadow. How long is the length of the shadow of this B casting along this direction, right? Okay. And how do you find this component? How uh, how do you find the length of the shadow? We can we can use this B here, dot it with this normal vector. Remember when you take that, that product, right? And then divide by that normal vector, okay? So basically, is this B dotted with a unit vector in this direction? Okay. Now, how do you do the dot product? What's N dotted with B? That product, you just take the each component and multiply and sum, right? So N here will be A, B is this. So basically, you take A times X1 minus X0 plus b times y1 minus y0, and then plus d times z1 minus z0 right here. And then you take the, this, this is the, this is the absolute value, okay? This is the absolute value over here. Okay, this thing cannot be negative. It has to be positive. So you put the absolute value over here. I think that will also answer your question that uh, Rene talked about the why do you took the absolute value? Okay. The 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 value of the parallel pi that you talk about has to be absolute value. But I, I get to that later. I saw that in the discussion you asked. Okay, so and then this is the absolute value over here because this thing cannot be negative. Okay, so it's the absolute value over here. And then divide by the magnitude of the normal vector, okay? So divide by the magnitude. So basically is actually B dotted with the unit vector in this normal vector direction, okay? So divide by the magnitude of the normal vector. So if the normal vector is really long or really short, it's not It's not going to affect that, okay? It's not going to affect this, this the distance over here. Okay, so it's going to divide by the length of the normal vector. Mm -hmm. So that will be the distance. So think about this as the shadow of this B passing along this normal vector direction. Now, since P not here uh, lies in the plane, so it satisfies the equation of the plane, right? That's the equation of the plane. Instead of so you can substitute x not y not z not into x y z, and you have this. Now, once you have this, 
you looking at this equation here, uh, looking at this expression over here, this expression over here actually can be rewritten, okay, in this form, in this one. And someone say, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. Well, you want me to fill in the detail? Or you can do it. Do you guys know how to get, get from here to here with this? Okay, let me put in the detail, a little bit of detail for you guys then. So for this one over here is going to be, oh, so you're going to have, that's equal to absolute value of AX1. Okay, let's put the X1, Y1 together. Okay, press B, I'm sorry, just, just keep it. AX0 plus BY1 minus BY0. And then um, once you have this, you see that AX1, so you have this one here, BY1 and CD1, and those are Y here, right? Those are Y here. But then um, what do we have here is, you see the negative AX0, negative BY0, negative CD0, is going to be the negative of this, so the negative this is equal to what? It's equal to D. Yeah, so that's why you have this. That's equal to D. So that's why you have over here. Okay. So it's a, you can fill this out. Okay. So after all this work, all this algebra, we got a formula. What's that formula? We can use this as a formula, right? So let's maybe put a box over. What is this formula? Tell me. Distance. distance. Yes, you got it. It's a distance. It's a distance of what? Let's draw a picture. Okay. So it's going to be the distance. Okay. Uh, let's pick a point on the print. Uh, a point in space. Okay. Let's say, so you have this point x1, y1, and then what, z1, so that point. And then you have a plane over here, right? this one in the plane, and it's the distance from here to this plane. That's the d, okay? What, what are those a, b, c? The A, B, C are what? The normal vectors, yeah. The A, B, C is the normal vector. I I think I need to draw this a little bit better, okay? Let me let me put the print a little bit. Right now, it doesn't look like that. So maybe I can put the print. Okay, so that's the one. So it's the distance from a point to the print. And then, um, like that. And notice that it's actually along this normal vector direction, right? Okay. So maybe that would give us a, let's think about how do we remember this. Okay, let's try to think about how do we remember this. <coughs> so the distance formula here, so you're given the equation, um, so we're given this normal vector, A, B, C, this is a normal, vector of the plane, then to find the to find the distance of this point to the to the plane, and they give you the equation for the plane is what? AX plus BY and then plus C Z and then plus D that's given, okay? That's equal to zero. That's equation for the plane. Okay, so given you this. Then to find the distance from this point to the, this plane over here, 
all you have to do is what? Just replace x by x1, y by y1, z by z1 in this in this one. So you have ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 plus d right here. And then took the absolute value of that. And then we'll divide by the magnitude of the normal vector. That will be the distance. It's a very neat formula, isn't it? It simplifies it so much. Maybe I can ask you to find maybe just one example. What's the distance? From this point, let's say one, so two to the plane, three x plus four y plus y z plus six equal to zero. What's the distance? Let's use it. If you use it, then you remember. According to the formula, what do we have? It's the absolute value of what? This is three. This is four. This is five. So there'll be what? Three times one, right? Yeah. Three times one plus what? Four times. Zero, and then plus five times, yes, two, and then plus six, and then divide by square root of, yeah, three square plus four square plus five square, right? Wow, this is a very easy formula, right? Oh, you have to do this. Okay, so that's the end of 12.5. Okay, oh, I still don't have questions about this. Let me let me try to answer that, okay? Um go back to go back to this. Okay. Oh, this one. Uh, still have a question about, about this. How do you do this nice statement? Okay, let me do that more detail, okay? So let me try this way. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do it all over here on this side. Yeah, I'm going to do it on the side over here. Okay, let's try to... Okay, so we have this line over here, right? Passing this point. So let's put that point... Uh, our first, okay, R naught, R naught right there. Um, that has this. Uh, X naught, Y naught, and Z naught. Okay, like that, and then also has this. And what what will be the direction vector? What's the direction vector of this line over here? That is V, right? Yeah, it's V. But in this sorry, 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 sorry. my best. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so the direction vector, this V over here, remember it's parallel to this, right? So it's the same as this. And then this one over here, how is this one, how's the direction vector relate to this R1 and R0? It's what? R1, well, you have your R0 plus this one. So if I go this one and then this way, you will the same as this, right? This one plus this one, you get this. Now, if you try to find this green vector here, then you use the blue one and then subtracting, subtracting this, right? So that will be R1 subtracting R0, right? Okay, so that's the direction factor. So once you get the 
the get this point and you get the direction vector, you can write the equation of the nine. Okay, what's the equation for the nine? It's uh, not too long ago, right? So what was the equation of the nine? So that is what R equal to, let's write down the general equation, R naught plus what? T times, T times V, right? Yeah, you got it. Okay, so now, then that is equal to, R naught plus E times, in this case, V is what? Yes, it's going to be R1 minus R naught. Okay. Now you want to, you can actually distribute, right? Now this one here is R naught and this one here is also R naught. So you will have, okay, let me just don't skip any step. So plus T times R1 minus T times R naught. Now you're gonna combine, you're gonna combine this one with this one. When you combine this one with this one, uh, you're going to end up with this, right? You will have one minus T R naught plus T times R1. But then the T here, if you could be any real number, you get the whole nine. But if you restrict T, go from zero to one, you will start from here and end it here. Okay, try that out. When t equals zero, this part is zero, you will get r naught. When t is one, this part here is zero, you will get r one. So when you restrict t go from zero to one, then you will get this nice segment. Start from here and end it here. Okay.